Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. If you have been following along, you know that I am building out a new R package that I'm calling Phylotyper that takes in DNA sequences and then classifies it to a different bacterial taxonomic grouping. Now, if none of that means anything to you or if you just don't care, don't worry, hang on. <laughs> You'll still learn a lot about package development. This has been my first time building my own R package and I have learned a lot, um, especially since I have to teach it all back to you. I hope that you are following along, building out your own dream package so that you can learn along with me. We are almost ready to submit this package to CRAN so that everybody can get it without having to install it through GitHub. That will just be, uh, make me so happy, right? But one thing that I need to do before we can start kind of checking off all the boxes to make sure that we're ready to submit is to return to my GitHub version of the repository and to notice that I have two issues uh, that I made note of as I went through developing the package. This episode, I think, will give us a great opportunity to think about uh, and integrate all the different concepts that we've been learning over the course of these many episodes in building out this first version of the package. Going to that issue tracker, you'll see that I have two issues. So uh, issue one uh, is that the filter taxonomy function uses a fractional value for min confidence while the output is a percentage. So I might say that the min confidence I want is 0 0.80, but the output is 80, right? And so I'd like those to be the same, probably have them both be in percents. The second issue that I have here is that I recall that using the RDP version of their reference training set, many of the bacterial taxa in there had quotes around their names, which kind of makes for kind of an odd appearance. And working with quotes inside of R or any software kind of gets a little bit kludgy. And so I prefer to remove those so that we don't have to worry about those quote marks. So again, these are the two issues that we're going to be talking about in today's episode. As a reminder, if you ever wanted to file an issue on my repository or, or your own, you can click on this green new issue tab and then you can insert a title as well as a description, right? And so one of the nice things is that in the description, you can do all sorts of great stuff, uh, writing it in Markdown, uh, uh, using things like links and attaching files or pictures or whatever you want. Uh, you can see a preview of it, right? And so it's, it's really handy. So again, we're gonna return to the issues. And this first issue that I wanna think about is filter taxonomy function uses a fractional value for min confidence while the output is a percentage. And so a couple notes, I, it's been a long time since I looked at these. I filed these August 1st, and I'm recording this at about September 20th. Uh, so it's been almost two months, and I haven't looked at the code a lot since then or this issue. So uh, I'm gonna work through it with you as we go through today's episode. So I see in the first, again, it's a repetition of what I had before, that the confidence scores are being outputted as percents, like 83, rather than fractions, 0.83. And so I'd like to instead go with percents and convert the mid-confidence to 80 rather than 0 0.80, okay? Um, and then there's some other stuff in here with classify sequence outputting fractions, but min taxonomy outputting percentages. All along this process, we've been using what's called test-driven development, where we make the test and then we develop the code. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go back to our tests, update our test to use percentages rather than fractions, run the test, see that it fails, figure out where it fails, and then refactor the code and then retest to see that it passes. Before going over to RStudio, I just wanna remind you that if you wanna get the code in my repository as it currently stands, down below in the description to this episode is a link to the repository as it currently stands. Also, there will be a link there for what the repository looks like at the end of the episode, so you'll have uh, these two issues being uh, completed. All right, so let's go over to RStudio. And what I'm going to look for first is this tests directory, and then test that. And then we have a variety of different tests here. So I'm not totally sure which tests we need to modify. Pretty sure it's not the read tests. So that leaves three other scripts to possibly modify. Uh, one is filter, print, and kmers. Kmers is where most of the work is being done. So let's start there. And um, maybe what we could do is maybe start at the bottom because I believe I wrote these tests kind of in order that I needed them. And so this first test at the bottom, or the last test I should say, um, I see that I have an expected confidence of one. And so again, I want that to be 100. Um, and then, so that should fail, right? And good. And so let's scroll up. And so here's another expected frac of 0.6. Let's go ahead and make that 60. 
All right, and then expected frac here of one. Let's make that 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for frac um, to make sure I've got all those instances. Well, those are the two instances, I guess. Okay. Um, okay, here's another confidence. Good. Um, and so again, this should be 100. This should be 80. This should be 80. Make sure that don't have anything else. Maybe if I search for confidence, that will help me. All right, so I think looking for confidence again, I get... Uh, the right values. All right, so let's just kind of scan back up, uh, looking through everything. I think we've seen these before. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think this all looks pretty good. Um, yeah, and I think here now we're getting back into building the database and things like that. Okay, so that was in Kamers. Let's also look at filter taxonomy. And so we wanted to filter to the confidence score. And so here again, we see we have these confidence scores, but these are in fractions rather than percentages. So let's go ahead and quickly uh, convert these to percentages. All right, and then uh, here we'll do the same thing, removing that period. And then 0 0.98 becomes 0.98, good. And then we also have this min confidence equals 80, right? That's what we want to use. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then let's also look at print taxonomy. And again, um, let's start at the top here. And again, these need to be converted. I think these are the same uh, confidence scores that I had before. That's good. Um, and then the expected, right, will be the percentages like we have, uh, have here, right? And so then we'll do the same type of thing down here. And I think we're getting to having our tests be all up to date. And that all looks good, right? Cool. All right, so I'll go ahead and save. And then let's go ahead to our build tab and we can then click test and we should get a bunch of things to fail. Good, <laughs> we got seven things to fail, wonderful. So let's start at the top. And what we see is that the um, in testkamers.r243.3, uh, so what we see is that the expected was 18080, but the observed was 111. And so the function that we're working with here is consensus BS class. And so now let's go to our files and we'll come back up to our R script, or our R directory rather, and then kamers.r. And then let's look for, yeah, our consensus BS class. Very good. And so again, as we scan through this, we recall that we did a variety of things to break the taxonomy into different layers. So we may have done 100 bootstrap replicates of our classification, and then we looked at the classifications of those 100 bootstraps, and we got a consensus across those 100 bootstraps. And within that consensus, then we reported the fraction, or now what we want actually is the percentage, to then get back the percentage of um, bootstraps that had the same classification, okay? And so I recall that this was not a very simple function that we called get consensus as well as consensus list. And then we also have this frac, which I think is an argument within um, consensus list, right? And so that was then pulling out the confidence scores. And so one thing we could do is perhaps uh, multiply all this by 100. But I think instead what I'll do is down here in the get consensus uh, function that we calculate the fraction, right? So taxonomy table max index divided by the number of bootstraps. So let's go ahead and multiply that by 100 to get back a percentage. So let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and retest and see what happens to our seven errors. What do you know? We've gone down to three errors, right? So that's great. <laughs> Wonderful. We're gaining on it. So now um, we're coming back up to our consensus taxonomy in our test print taxonomy.r. And so what I'm noticing is that the, the actual versus the expected, the expected was 100, 100, 99, 99, 98, 98. And what we're getting instead is like 10,000, right? And so it's, it's basically propagating things through, but I think in print taxonomy.r, what we're doing is we're multiplying everything by 100. So we're doing it there rather than what we just did here. So let's go to print taxonomy. And we can see, sure enough, right here, I have this 100 times. So I'll go ahead and remove that. Let's go ahead and test and see if we're 
getting any closer. What do you know? <laughs> hey, we solved all our failed results. Wonderful. Um, we've got everything down to zero fails, zero warnings, zero skips, 45 passes. Awesome. So next I'm gonna come to my vignette and what I'd like to do is go ahead and run the vignette to make sure that everything in here runs the way I'd like it to, right? Everything should already be captured within uh, my testing rig, but I just wanna make sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and double check that I've got the whole package loaded and then we'll come down here uh, to library per, we'll set the seed and then we'll build the database. Again, train set nine PDS is a data object built into the Phylotyper package. Go ahead and run that to build the database. This takes a couple seconds. Very good. We've got a unknown sequence here that we can load and then we can uh, go ahead and get the consensus. And so now we see that we've got these bacterial names along with our confidence scores, which are all in percents. Awesome. And so that, that makes things look great. Um, and again, one of the things that we saw here was that this was the output from classification with 100 bootstraps, but that we have then two percentages less than 80. And so let's go ahead and run, uh, let's run this by assigning it back to consensus. And then we can take consensus and run it through filter taxonomy. That looks good, but not good. <laughs> hey, hey, so I noticed a problem here, right? And the problem is that it didn't actually filter my data, right? And I think that's because filter taxonomy has a default parameter for min confidence of 0.8 rather than 80. And I remember that because we wrote that in that issue. Okay, so let's come back to filter taxonomy and I'm gonna come back to my tests and we'll find the filter taxonomy. So I'm surprised that this passed. Ah, and it passed because I put in a min confidence, right? So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna copy this test and in one case, I'm going to leave out the min confidence to test the default min confidence, okay? So let's go ahead and save that and test it. And we see that sure enough, it failed. And so one of the things that's really nice about test-driven development is that if you find a bug, like we did by running through the vignette, that we can then design a test around that bug, which is exactly what I did here, right? So in the vignette, I ran filter taxonomy without showing the min confidence score, okay? And so now we got that fail. And so now we need to go back and look at filter taxonomy, which again, we can come down to R and then uh, filter taxonomy.r. And what I'd like is for the default to be 80, okay? And so I'll go ahead and remove that. And so here we also need to update the, um, the example, right? And so we'll go ahead and change this uh, to be the right values. All right. And so then min confidence here should be 80. We'll save that. And I think that all looks good. This makes me wonder also about my other functions and whether or not I have those um, adequately updated in the example. So that was filter. Um, I wonder about print taxonomy. Um, yeah, this needs to be updated too, right? So this needs to be 100, 99, 99, 98. All right, and so then that should be all good. All right, so now again, we've got this failed test. We need to fix it. I think we fixed it by making this min confidence equals 80. So we've got everything saved. Let's go ahead and test it. Wonderful, it passed. Excellent, okay. So let's come back to filer typer. Let's go ahead and reload our package. And we can see down here that we have done that. And I will go ahead and repeat these steps to go ahead and make sure that we get uh, what we expect. Consensus uh, and then filtered. And then we can look at filtered and see that sure enough, we now have the filtered version of those confidence scores, nothing below 80. Uh, and so that's great. And so then we can go ahead and run print filtered and we should see exactly what we expected, which brings us to the second issue. But before we go to that second issue, I'm gonna go ahead and commit these changes. And so I'll go ahead and first do document to update all the documentation, because again, I updated those examples. I'll also go ahead and check to make sure everything still builds correctly. Excellent, that ran through with no errors, no warnings, no notes. I'm gonna go ahead over to my terminal uh, do a get status, see the files that have been um, updated. 
I'll go ahead and add these. So I'll do git add. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a period. Normally, I don't use the period. The period is kind of a nuclear option that will get all the files. And so whenever I use that period, I always want to make sure that I first ran git status so I can see exactly what is going to be getting added to my repository. Because as you've seen, if you don't pay attention, you might you know, try to commit a really big file that's going to cause all sorts of headaches. I talked about that in an episode a few episodes back. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add those. Git status. Everything's good. And so then I'll go ahead and do git commit dash m and I'll say I'll say change confidence scores to percents percentages and then I'll do something special I'll do close pound one and so this will close issue number one okay and maybe I'll go ahead and put in here issue number one it's of course going to run through the pre-commit uh, hook checks to make sure everything looks good. Get status. I see that it did commit the change. Uh, so everything is good. Now if I do a git push, that should again push everything up to GitHub. And then coming back to my issue tracker, if I click on that first link, I'll see um, that I now have this commit message connected with issue one. So if I ever want to come back and see what were the changes that were done to get this issue resolved, I can come back to this issue. So I would have expected that close keyword to go ahead and close it. Um, maybe it's got to run through um, kind of all the, the hooks that it's running with GitHub Actions first. So we'll come back to this before we uh, say goodbye to go ahead, certainly manually close the issue if nothing else. But I thought this close issue should have closed it for me. Maybe it doesn't like having the close issue number one. Maybe it just wanted close number one. So anyway, we've got another issue. So let's go to that. We'll then go to issue number two. Some taxa have quotes in their names. And so as we saw um, from our console over here, that when I printed out the taxonomy, many of these names, like Bactroidetes, had quotes in them. And so then because they have quotes, to escape out of the quotes, you have to have a backslash. And so all that backslashing uh, and escape characters really gets a bit frustrating in R. So my preference would be to leave out the quotes. And so I believe in this issue, I said it'd be best to do this in the read taxonomy function. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we start messing with uh, read taxonomy.r, let's go back to our test and update a test to make sure that it's doing exactly what we want it to do. So we'll go to test that, read taxonomy.r, Let's give us some more breathing room in here, right? And so one of the things that you will see is that I uh, created a FASTA file with all sorts of different arrangements of taxonomies. So I'm going to add a few more to these uh, to get quotes into the names. And so to do that, I think I'm going to have to do like a backslash quote, backslash quote, right? Um, and maybe... I'll, I'll add a few more. So I'll do one around the C as well. Uh, and there. And there. Uh, and let's go ahead and do the A. So we'll do all three uh, layers uh, with quotes around it. So that should work. And so then these are like seek G one, two, three. So then I'll go ahead and copy the seek G uh, to add on like one, two, and three. And then I'll also want to do it with uh, single quotes. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of repeat the same thing. Um, and then down here, I'll make this like H1, 2, and 3. It doesn't really matter what I call them, but something. Uh, and I'll change all these double quotes into single quotes. Uh, if I was a little bit more sophisticated, I could pr probably figure out how to do this more directly. Okay, so this double quote needs to stay there. Uh, and then this one around the C, and then the B, and the C. Okay, so I think that should be good. But of course, we need to add H1, 2, and 3. So I'll go ahead and copy this, and we'll do H1, uh, H2, and H3. And yep, it does have a space before those names, so I just wanted to double check that. Now let's go ahead and test it. And again, it should fail. Very good, so it's failed um, on those tests as expected. Now we need to go to our read taxonomy file. Go back to file a typer, 
our read taxonomy. And again, what we want to do is strip out those quote characters that are in the names. And let's see how we might do that. Um, so again, reminding ourselves of what this looks like, um, that we have read taxonomy, and it um, is our function that takes in a file. So it's reading the file in as a TSV with two columns. The first column is the sequence identifier. The second is the taxonomy name. All right, and those are coming in as characters. We are then replacing uh, the final semicolon and getting rid of that, right? And if there's a semicolon and a space, we're getting rid of that. And so we'll want to do um, something similar to this, but with the quotes, right? And so let's go ahead and do this. And instead of the semicolon space, what we'll do is backslash quote, and we'll replace that with nothing. So it should get rid of the quotes around our names. So let's go ahead, save and test. Good. So we still have a failure, but it's failing on the single quotes rather than the double quotes, okay? And so what we could do, I think, is to wrap this in a square brace with a backslash quote and a backslash single quote. And so that square brace will tell um, str replace all regex to replace either a double quote or a single quote with nothing. So let's see if this works. And we'll go ahead and test it, and it passes, what do you know? So I'm really happy that this works, um, that we are able to go ahead and remove those uh, double quotes and single quotes in our taxonomy names. And again, just to prove to ourselves that this still works, passes wonderfully, I'm going to go ahead and load the package, come back to my vignette, and make sure that the output of running the vignette doesn't have quotes in the consensus taxonomy. So again, we'll come back up, I'll rerun the seed, I'll rebuild the database, and then we'll go ahead and load the unknown, which of course we already have loaded. We'll run the classification. Again, if we look at the consensus, so, hey, <laughs> it still has those quotes. And why is that? Well, because I didn't actually run read taxonomy, right? I'm using the train set nine underscore PDS that we saw up here. So that was unexpected. I hadn't thought of that. So let's come back to Phylotyper. And we want to look at our data raw. And so if we look at train set nine here, I think that all we really need to do is rerun this and everything should get updated, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I can source this entire file to get it to rerun, reload the data. Um, I, it's asking me if I want to update anything. I'm going to say none for now. Very good. And let's look at train set nine PDS and see what we've got. Um, yeah, it's hard to see from, from this output uh, what we've got going on, if any of these have quotes. So why don't we go ahead back to our um, vignette and we can go ahead and rebuild that database and then we can load the unknown and then classify the sequence. And wonderful, <laughs> hey, those quotes with backslashes are gone, okay? Again, I think this is where it's helpful to have the vignette. I suppose as I sit here thinking about it, what I could have done is used the uh, use the, the train set data within the test to make sure that that came back with no quotes in any of the names. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but I think that would have been perhaps a better strategy than ultimately what I did here. I kind of, I cut out the test part, but hey, um, this seems to be working rather well, and I think, I think we're in good shape. We'll go ahead and document to update the documentation. Very good. And then I'll go ahead and build uh, to check the package works. Wonderful, that ran through without any problems. You can come to our terminal, do a get status. And again, we see the files that have been updated. I'll go ahead and do a git add uh, r read taxonomy, git add data train set nine uh, and a star to get both of those files. And then the tests um, with test that, test read taxonomy, good. Double checking, we're committing the stuff we want, good. And then we'll do git 
commit dash m remove stray quotes in taxonomy names. And here I'm going to do closes number two. So before I said closes issue number one, I think what I want is just without the issue to say closes number two. So we'll go ahead, commit this, make sure it goes through our pre-commit hook to make sure everything is good before we push things up to GitHub. All right, so it didn't commit. Let's look at what happened. And so then we see um, that it modified this file. So if I do, if I copy that and do git diff on that, I see that it reformatted, um, it reformatted what my vector looks like. So just again, to show you here, um, down here with my expected, I had it like up here, right? I had it like this. And so I didn't want that. They wanted it kind of all the arguments um, to start on their own line. Good. Okay. So we'll let it do that. So we'll save that and I'll do again a git add on that test. Let me grab that named before I forget. Uh, that was this. And then git status. Good. And then I can scroll back up through the history, hitting the up arrow to recommit and everything should work well this time. Good. That all went through. And again, I can do a git push. All that gets moved up to GitHub. And now we see that we have the purple tag here for closed along with um, the commit message that was associated with closing the issue or resolving the issue. And so if I refresh this page, I see that that issues number two went down to issues one because I only have one issue, but really I don't have any issues because I can go ahead and hit close issue on this issue one because it has been completed. Great. And so now when we go to our issue tracker, we see we have zero open issues and three closed issues. You'll recall that one of those closed issues I, I resolved a couple episodes back where I had a misspelling in the vignette that uh, Rob Hansen flagged for me. Okay, so we're all in good shape now. Uh, this is running through my various GitHub actions to build the site and get everything to be good to go. In the next episode, we are going to be good to go. We are going to go ahead and submit this up to CRAN. I'm so excited to do this with you. Um, I've never submitted my own package to CRAN. People in my lab have submitted them and I've just kind of like, you know, said, checked things off and said, yes, this is good to go. But I've never done the whole thing myself. So I'm really excited to do it and to be able to do it with you. So that you don't miss that exciting event, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you've told all your friends about what we're doing here on Code Club.